Okay, in the next roughing step, we're going to go ahead and rough out this area here. To do that, I'm going to zoom up, select my starting face, and I'm going to rotate my part a little bit, hold the Alt key, select my ending face. Right click, roughing again. Now, to start with, the software is, of course, going to try to rough it with the previous tool, which is that uh, neutral tool that we had at 45 degrees. Now, here, what we're going to do is we're going to first switch to the uh, groove roughing method up here. And now I'm going to switch tools as well. When I switch tools, I have another tool already in here. This is my standard uh, four millimeter uh, groove roughing tool. Go ahead and look back. Now the software is maintaining that B axis angle for us. So we're going to come into here first and now we're going to set some options. I'm going to zoom back out here for a sec and I'm going to look at being with my B at 90 and my A or orientation of my tool at 180. You can see it here like this. This way, I'm using the tool offset to the correct side automatically. Next, I'm going to copy my feeds and speeds. Again, I'm going to use something similar, so why not? I'm going to copy those over. Let's go look, make sure everything came in the way we want. 750 surface feet, 15,000 per rev, max RPM of 3,000. If we look at our gauge points, we have a left and a right gauge point because it's a groove tool that's perfect. We can come in here and we can play with any type of groove roughing we want. Now, we can use multiple control points. Okay, I can program with the left point and the right point. I can drive only by the left, only by the right. Of course, the choice is yours. If I go to the strategy tab here, I can choose the type of roughing methodology we want, including tricoidal roughing. Why not? Let's have a look at that option. With tricoidal roughing, I'm going to go ahead and set my radius and set my axial pass depth. Maybe here I only want to take 30,000th depth of cut. If I zoom up on the tool path, you can see it's going to lead in, it's going to cut, come back, and it's basically going to keep that tool engaged in cutting in a continuous fashion. Perfect. Like that, this operation is done. Let's let it update the stock model, and let's maybe take a look at the simulation. Cool. Now, as I zoom out here, you can see the tools coming in. Now, during a simulation like this, what's important too is the chuck, right? So if I look here, I can actually turn on the rotation of the chuck. And why would we do that? We do that because we want to see if there's going to be a collision at that moment of turning, right? So let's turn this thing on and let's see what happens here. So we're coming down, we're looking. And that gets close, and I'm going to go ahead and pause it. That gets close, <laughs> but it never actually hits. Pretty cool, huh? If it did hit, this software would tell us about the collision. Awesome. 